And good afternoon to everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar about Colombia, the thriving business hub in the heart of Latin America. Um, it's a great pleasure to um, welcome the Colombian ambassador to Switzerland, Mr. Francisco Echeverri, and Mr. David Canal of ProColombia in the Frankfurt, Germany office. Uh, hi, Francisco. Hi, David. Me alegra, me escuchan, me alegra saludarlos, David, eh, Daniel, Daniel, eh, eh, David y a todos los asistentes, un cordial saludo. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Daniel. How are you, Mr. Ambassador? It's a pleasure to share the space with you as well. So we will be uh, conducting this uh, webinar in, in English, if that's okay, Francisco, so the, to uh, have our international audience uh, participate. Um, yes. For our audience, if you have questions during the webinar, please feel free to uh, write them in the chat that you should see. I think, uh, I believe there's a chat box uh, beneath or beside the, the window. And we will reserve some space at the end of this webinar to answer any questions that you might have. Also, this webinar is a live event, but we will uh, upload the recording of it uh, later on in, in our uh, YouTube channel uh, for those people that maybe cannot uh, attend uh, during the full hour. I think we will um, have uh, our panel with Francisco and David. Uh, it's going to take maybe 45 minutes tops, and then we will have uh, take questions from, from the audience. So let's start. Um, I, I would like to start with a, with a question uh, to, to Francisco. Um, you were sworn in uh, not too long ago as ambassador of Colombia to Switzerland. Um, Francisco, how do uh, Swiss diplomats and political leaders here see Colombia and Latin America in general from what you have seen so far? Okay. Um, well, uh, before... Uh, before, uh, uh, let me thank you, uh, Daniel, and everybody that is um, connected right now for this opportunity to discuss uh, opportunities uh, in, in Colombia. So what, I, what I've seen in these three months that I've been acting as, as ambassador is, uh, is a community of, uh, in Switzerland, uh, and I would include, include uh, the diplomatic corps and the Swiss government and the, and the Swiss society and business people. I see uh, a lot of interest in, in what's going on in Colombia. Uh, you know that we have, we have a new government and this government is uh, a government that for, for the first time in our history, is a government that is, that is from the left. So that makes even more interesting the situation in Colombia. Uh, be, for historical reasons um, that you all know, probably you all know, um, for, um, for a, a member of the left to be elected in Colombia due to the circumstances that were so, uh, surrounding uh, my country was very difficult, was very difficult because we have a conflict and in that conflict, uh, the, the, many people, many people uh, decided uh, not to vote for the left for different reasons. Uh, in, uh, there were, um, but um, finally, in our history, we have a new government with that uh, um, uh, ideological perspective and, 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 the, and the process and the experiment is going really well. It's going really well because uh, President Petro's government is very committed to um, social justice, to um, a, a, a environmental issues, uh, the protection of the Amazon, uh, climate change, uh, uh, reforestation, the protection of our forests, not only, not only the Amazon, but all the forests in Colombia. 
and, and regarding the economic and the um, and the investment the president is also committed to uh, protect foreign investment and he welcomes his government welcomes investment in our country tourism and 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 in the case of the bilateral relation between between switzerland and, and colombia he is more than glad to be able to to talk to the swiss government talk to the business community in switzerland in order to see ways to improve uh, this the investment and the uh, establishment of new companies swiss companies in, in colombia and, um, and let me let me remind everybody that in in a few days march 14 uh, we're going to be um, celebrating 100 um, 15 years of bilateral relations and uh, and that's going to happen and a week after the swiss president the president of the confederation mr alan berse is going to be traveling to colombia and he's going to spend three days in in the country and he's going to be supporting the peace process that is going on right now is underway in our country right now and with the second biggest guerrilla the eln uh, as you know we signed a peace agreement with the biggest guerrilla the farc and now uh, a similar process is going on with the eln guerrilla so Another good news is that Colombia, hopefully sooner than later, is, going, is not is not going to have any more uh, guerrillas in, in the country, and that's gonna and, and that's gonna have a safer Colombia, and a Colombia that that is even more peaceful with this initiative from from the government. So uh, uh, what I want to say is that. The environment in Colombia is great for business and for opportunities. And uh, maybe, and maybe if I if I can yes yes I'm please. sorry if, if I if I may jump in there uh, uh, briefly, Francisco. Um, I mean, you you mentioned already like the the um, election victory of President Petro was was a, a historic event. Uh, Petro is the first leftist president that Colombia has ever had since its independence. Uh, but obviously, and, and uh, President Petro is not the, the only or the first president to be like from the left to be elected into office in Latin America uh, last year, uh, because the whole region has seen uh, what people also call the pink tide, uh, that uh, a lot of leftist presidents were voted into office. Uh, besides Colombia, uh, we're talking uh, Peru, Chile, Brazil, etc. So, so a big part of, of Latin America at the moment uh, is, is seeing a, a leftist uh, administrations. And this has led to um, a certain nervousness amongst the international business community or amongst foreign investors. Now, coming back to, to Colombia, I mean, specifically, um, what, what has the Petro administration um, what kind of measures has the administration of President Petro taken so far to, to kind of uh, um, provide uh, more confidence and promote economic development and, and create jobs uh, and investment opportunities in Colombia? I just, I, I, I'm going to let uh, the, the expert that is Daniel, Daniel Canal, is going to talk about specifics. David. But what I want to mention is that the, the environment, the, the pre president, uh, president Petro is, is, hasn't changed uh, the way we see foreign investment in Colombia. Uh, on the contrary, he is welcoming and he's inviting more investment in the country and he hasn't taken any kind of measures to uh, stop that, that those opportunities 
Uh, and it's a simple fact. You can check, you can see the newspapers, you can follow the, the political uh, discussions in my country, and, and nothing has changed in that sense. And of course, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, this is a government that has a, a, a leaning uh, uh, towards the left. It's a leftist government. But the, the, the situation is that uh, he, of course, is going to try to is going to try to um, concentrate a lot of resources, most of, of the resources on, on, on the people that are in need in the country. Uh, more public education, improving the health 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 care system and measures like that. But regarding investment, the government and everybody is really aware that uh, is, is very important investment. And regarding Switzerland, we have, as I mentioned, we have a history that goes back more than a century and 15 years uh, coming this uh, March 14th. And in our history, uh, we have uh, 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 many entrepreneurs from Switzerland that uh, have always come to, to the country and invest in the country. And some of the big, biggest companies in, in, in Colombia, in, in, in one way or the other, have the signature of a Swiss um, founder. So the, the environment is open, the environment is, is clear and is welcoming. It's welcoming more investment. And uh, if you allow me, I'll, I'll, I'll give the floor, uh, Daniel, to, to Daniel. To, to David. Uh, probably in order to uh, talk about specifics. But from the political sure. point of view, is total assurance that this government is welcoming foreign investment. Yes, yes, I would, I would um, support what our ambassador just pointed out uh, by a more like intimate conversation. I had, I had the opportunity of working at Bogota's in, uh, investment promotion agency for eight years, and I arrived where when Mr. Uh, our president, Mr. Gustavo Petro, was the mayor of Bogota. So basically, he has very strong social policies, of course, but what we evidenced yes. during his four-year uh, period as Bogota mayor were the four best years of foreign investment in, in, in Bogota. So this response to the long-haul uh, initiatives that Colombia has as a country, for example, if you analyze the, the last 100 years of of Colombia, we have never been in default. So either way of the political flavor, and you can we can check it with the facts, with the foreign direct investment facts, um, either way, if it's uh, any kind of political flavor, um, we as a country have a long-term strategy for attracting uh, direct investment. So, and, and you can see that with, with what he has mentioned about the foreign companies as allies to the reindustrialization of Colombia. So basically, uh, it's totally, totally friendly. We remain with our core, as I, I want to point out very specifically, the long-term policies that Colombia has regarding uh, foreign companies. Uh, we haven't changed uh, in, in many years, uh, many policies that have are, are long lived, such as the equal treatment that foreign companies get in Colombia, the incentives it's for they're for everyone. So so basically, that's you know what what the, no, no, I think this this has to do as well. That like Colombia uh, has very strong institutions um, that that actually support this long term. Uh, strategy and 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 kind of the, the legal and regulatory framework uh, that can be uh, based on for, in the long in the long run. Um, but maybe we, before we get um, more into the the economic benefits or, or or business benefits Colombia has to offer, David, I would like to to maybe take a step back and and um, 
uh, ask you a similar questions to Francisco because like like Francisco um, you uh, arrived uh, at at your new role as a senior investment advisor at Pro Colombia's office in in Frankfurt Germany uh, uh, recently and I'm always interested to like you you are primarily uh, focused on the German speaking part of Europe and I'm always interested in how um, do you perceive the perspective um, of European investors, companies uh, in regards to Colombia? How do you see is Colombia being perceived amongst uh, the, the European uh, investment or business community? The, the, thank you. No, that, that's, I, I love that question, uh, Daniel. So basically, I would like to point out three things. Three basic things that I have noticed uh, during my tenure, my, my initial uh, one and a half months here in, in Germany, but also the previous experience that I just pointed out. So basically, foreign companies, uh, I've noticed they get three main impressions. So the first one is that they get surprised by the FDI, the foreign direct investment figures that European companies uh, inflow into Colombia, for instance. Uh, in 2022, just a Q3, which is the last data that we have available, there were uh, $4.4 billion of foreign direct investment. For 2021, 4.8. And that's, that is a post-pandemic year. 2020, $4.1 billion. And 2019, 5.6, just from Europe. So this is is the first thing that they that they get surprised by so they, they get very surprised by the dynamics of foreign direct investment in in colombia from the european side uh can, also, can you maybe can, sorry if i interrupt but can, can you maybe um indicate which are the the principal countries from europe uh, that make yes. up those fda numbers Yes, yes, I can. Basically, the the first one is Spain, and and it's very interesting. And and I will and you will will be surprised. The first one is Spain with over the last five years more than seven point seven billion, I, I, uh, seven billion dollars. Of course, there is a big uh, language affinity with Spain. For instance, I've had the pleasure of supporting uh, Spanish companies that even it's, it's the first time that that they go abroad they go to colombia instead of here internationalizing in europe due to language reasons so then you have switzerland with 3.6 billion it's amazing and of course the double taxation treaty and all the good relation that we have with switzerland as a country helps out and not just from the swiss companies that of, of course we have nestle with huge investments in Colombia, but we also have other uh, companies that use Switzerland with their branch companies there to channel investment to Colombia. Then you have the UK, uh, France and the Netherlands. So that, that's the top five. Yeah, right. so uh, I don't know if you if you have any any questions regarding like the FDI inflows. Um, but another thing that I have noticed is is like this and, and i would point out not just technical things that i think that are important such as the numbers but also the feeling that i've seen from you from european companies i don't know if you're familiar i know that you are familiar with the name of the airport which is el dorado airport um that is a legend an indigenous legend that basically speaks about a hidden city that is made out of gold so just from the name, and I've, I've heard this from many companies, just from the name that you're going to El Dorado Airport is, is magical and like discovering a whole new world. Uh, and basically in terms of business, uh, the gateway to Latin America. So they find a prosperous and an and appropriate place to kick off their operations in Latin America. Uh, for many reasons, logistical reasons, geographical reasons. So those three things, I, I would think, I would point out. There are many others, but I would I would point out those three in terms of of the 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 feeling that European and German speaking companies get when they come for the first time to to Colombia. All right, thank you, David. Um, Francisco, maybe a, a follow up question for you. Um, from from a political and regulatory standpoint maybe 
Um, I mean, what we are seeing um, at, at Ongreso uh, doing business in Colombia over the past 13 years already is that over the past few years, there has been a marked increase in companies from Europe, but also from North America who choose Colombia as a regional hub uh, to service either the South American or sometimes the whole Latin American region. Um, that, that is a, a trend that, that, that has grown. Um, I think before, maybe 20 years ago, uh, a, a typical regional hub would have been Venezuela. Uh, Panama is always a, another option, but, but Colombia has kind of emerged as one of the preferred hubs for international companies doing business in the region. Now, um, from your perspective, um, Francisco, what, what, what are the political and regulatory advantages that Colombia offers that make it an attractive business hub? And then obviously afterwards, I, I would like to ask a similar question to, to David, but, but more focused on, on more the, the, the business environment. But politically and regulatorily, what are the comparative advantages that Colombia offers to foreign businesses uh, that makes it a, a, an interesting hub? Well, well um, uh, I, I, I will begin uh, stating the, the obvious that we can see in a map. And, and this is the, the geographical advantage of Colombia having the, 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 the advantages of, of, of uh, two oceans. So you have the possibility of, of, uh, of sending goods, uh, receiving goods uh, from using the, the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean because we, we have coasts on both uh, oceans and, and regarding the, the the regulatory advantages, um, Colombia has uh, uh, the the advantage of being part, being a, a member of um, different trade agreements. Colombia is part of the Pacific Alliance. Colombia has uh, trade agreements with, with many countries. Uh, and so the, our country has been for, for the last 30 years in a continuous process of opening, opening to, 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 to the international community. And, uh, and uh, the investors can, can um, get those advantages, the advantages of, of, of Colombia uh, as a member of different uh, trade agreements. Um, and and, and as, as I mentioned, Colombia is, is very friendly to foreign investment. You don't see probably those debates that could happen in, in other countries. I would say that in general, in Colombia, the environment, the environment is very, very, um, very friendly uh, to to investment. So it's uh, it's um, it's been happening in that way for three or four decades. Thank you, Francisco. And uh, David, I mean, you, you mentioned that in, in your previous uh, job, you, you worked for, for the promotion agency of, of the capital, Bogota. Yes. Uh, and now you represent uh, the, whole, uh, the whole of Colombia abroad. So, so how do you promote um, Colombia as, as a regional hub, maybe even? Uh, what, what kind of factors do you usually uh, highlight <coughs> when talking to companies looking at the region? For sure, for sure. No, uh, the, there are many, of course, the, the advantages of, of Colombia and every the, one thing that you uh, and that companies get surprised by as well is the diversity of business that you have in, that you can carry out in, in Colombia. For instance, of course, Bogota is one part of, of that. Uh, but Bogota, for instance, is a services city. Over 60% of Bogota's GDP are services. And what is enchanting about uh, Colombia is that the investors see that we have uh, over seven regions and they can diversify their investments. For example, if you go to the Pacific coast, uh, the, the capabilities 
And the strategy of that region is obviously targeted at heavy industries, for instance, such as uh, manufacturing industries and, and things that are mainly moved by, by ship. Uh, then if you go to the center of the country, of course, if, if, by speaking of the manufacturing sector, lighter uh, products, lighter goods. Um, so uh, that's, basically, that's basically it uh, in terms of uh, diversity. Other things, what our ambassador just mentioned, it is such a, a great surprise when they find out that they can be five hours away from every city, but also the time difference with main markets. Um, the, the third one, I would say, is the stable macroeconomic environment. Uh, Colombia is, always stands out in Latin America. Just to give you an example, the, the 2023 forecast for GDP growth in Latin America is 1.3%. And in Colombia, we have a uh, 7.5. Uh, sorry, yes, 7.5. So basically... Uh, Colombia always outperforms the rest of, of Latin America, um, and and that's important for every single uh, industry, regardless of the sector. Um, I would say the the last thing uh, is the the labor force that we have as well. We have a a, a very young labor force of over twenty five million people that is uh, currently being fed by over Every every five years, around three million people of all sorts, PhDs, master's degrees, bachelors, te technical uh, technicians, and so on, come into the labor market. And and I think that's something that Europe currently is uh, being challenged by. You know, the aging population that is um, happening, or, or that Europe has currently. You know, with that inverted population pyramid. For example, here in Germany, the, the that's the case. So they find a lot of talent and young labor force as well. I would say that th these are, are like the main things that company look out uh, in terms of to, to establish a business. Of, of, of course, prices, you, you would be surprised, but a recent, and you don't hear me speak a lot about the, the wages and how most cost efficient uh, Colombia is in terms of wages, for example, for a European company to hire people in Colombia. And by a recent survey, that FDI markets carried out, uh, that was just like the FDI markets is one of the main foreign direct investment publications that is part of the Financial Times. Costs were not even in the top 10 of the, of the key drivers of companies when establishing abroad. So if you put cost on top of that, that's like the cherry because of course uh, we do not have a strong currency uh, regarding dollars or euros. So you will be, you know, your, your money will multiply as well in, in Colombia. So those reasons are, are the key points for, for establishing regional hubs in Colombia. And, and, and Daniel, if you allow me, the, the Colombians, the young Colombians are people very easy to work with. You know Colombia, so the people in Colombia are really nice, are welcoming, and they, they, they really uh, work hard and, and, and things, uh, and I was talking to a Swiss, uh, to a Swiss um, investor uh, that helped open recently uh, a company, a company in, in Colombia, and he was mentioning that, that the investors were so happy with the people uh, uh, because the, the, the is is a is is a committed the, the Colombians are committed people the hardworking people as you know and the, uh, and are people that are, that are ready to help and and uh, help uh, a business growth in the in the in the country so I, I I want I have to underline that thank you and 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 I, I can only second that uh, Francisco I, I mean. And... We have been employing uh, uh, human talent in, in Colombia for over a decade, and and uh, that that's, there's a reason for that, and and the main reason is is exactly what you just said. Uh, I think human talent is the most precious resource Colombia has. Uh, besides that, as David said, it's abundant. Colombia has a very young population, 
and and I think the the attitude uh, and the willingness to work hard and the resilience of of the Colombian labor force is definitely uh, an advantage that is probably still underexploited. Uh, and what what we are seeing is that this is changing also, and, and I think COVID uh, showed uh, to a lot of companies that it is possible to hire remotely. Uh, maybe there was a before there was a bit of a resistance to that, but but since COVID, um, what we have seen in Colombia is is a, a marked increase of demand, especially by North American companies for for talent, uh, but also in some cases by European companies, especially those uh, serving the U.S. market, and for those obviously it makes uh, a lot of sense as well to build teams in Latin America. Uh, to serve their U.S. clients, and and there as well, uh, Colombia is is one of the most attractive destinations. Uh, and Daniel, I, I, if you allow me, also what I mentioned, we have a net of trade agreements that can benefit Swiss investors. We have, as you, as you all know, we have trade agreements with uh, Asian countries. We have trade agreements with uh, North America. United States and Canada included, of course, Mexico. We have trade agreements with different, different countries. So there is also, a, um, if you allow me to call it a rebound effect that is very beneficial. So that's, uh, that's another point that, that, I, that I, want, I want to mention, okay. underline that, that, uh, that point. And, and, and actually, that just leads me to my next question for you, Francisco, and because I wanted to highlight a bit of all the, uh, the, the uh, like international or, or uh, regional trade blocks and, and alliances that Colombia is part of. I think uh, the one that, that um, deserves a special highlight is the Pacific Alliance. Um, Colombia, together with Mexico, Peru and Chile, is one of the founding members of the Pacific Alliance, which is uh, besides Mercosur, the, the, the most important trade bloc in Latin America with a combined population of, of 230 million people and approximately 35% of GDP of the whole region is combined in the Pacific Alliance. And this has been um, obviously uh, a lot of work has gone into uh, making this uh, trade bloc happen and integrated it even further. Um, but uh, how far in from your point of view francisco how far advanced is the actual integration of the pacific uh, alliance states and, and what are the benefits that it can offer to international companies uh, locating themselves in one of the member member countries well from from my point of view uh, my point of view is basically di diplomatic and political because Daniel is, uh, can give you more details. Uh, Pacific Alliance is a wonderful uh, experiment. And one of the reasons why is it, it is still strong is because uh, we sidelined, we sidelined all the political issues. So the Pacific Alliance is not, that doesn't have any, any elements of uh, uh, that are political um, is 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 not like other blocks that issue issue press releases about the political situation in certain country. No, we are concentrated on the Pacific Alliance in opening markets with the Pacific in the in Asian Pacific area. And that has given a, a, a lot of room for the Pacific Alliance in order to try to create a bigger market inside the four countries, inside the four countries, uh, because when the Pacific Alliance was created, it is incredible, but the trade between these four medium and big size countries were, was really small inside, inside trade, inside uh, commerce. So the first, one of the first purposes of the Pacific Alliance was to increase the trade between Colombia, Peru, Chile, and Mexico. That was, I remember, was 
less than a percentage of the whole trade of the four countries. And then uh, keep looking to the, uh, to the Pacific uh, uh, Basin in order to get closer to, to Asia and other markets. So uh, there in the Pacific Alliance with all the advantages that it offers commercially and in other areas, uh, technology and innovation, there you have a big market. You know, these four countries are very populated uh, and, 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 and are huge markets. Colombia has 51 million people, Chile has uh, less, uh, Peru is uh, probably is in the neighborhood of those statistics, and Mexico has more people, even more people. So we're talking about a huge market. And, and, and that's there. That's there to take advantage of it. And Latin America, one thing that I want to mention also is that we change governments. Uh, now in Colombia it's coming the left, is the left, which is wonderful because we're having alternation for the first time in our history. That's wonderful. And, um, but the message of Latin America is that even we have trouble and difficulties, you see a region that is stable in general. Even that certain countries has certain political troubles, the countries, those countries keep working, keep going ahead. So there is a stability in the neighborhood. Even, even on these difficult times of uncertainty. Uh, thank you. And, and, and maybe just to add to that, I, I think it's, it's, it's not just, just stability, it's, it's actually peace. Um, I think in today's world, where we have so many uh, violent conflicts going on, uh, especially in, in, in Ukraine, Russia, um, I think Latin America has, uh, in comparison, it is now one of the more stable and more peaceful regions, uh, which is also kind of surprising, uh, given the, 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 the more violent past the region has lived through as well. Uh, and Daniel, I, I would like to, to add something to what our ambassador just pointed out, is how do you make the most as an investor of the Pacific Alliance? So I will just give one example, because we, we have touched on this topic for, for a long time, is in, within the Pacific Alliance countries, 98% of the whole tariff list is tax-free. So if you are a foreign investor and you, for example, establish a manufacturing facility in Colombia, your product most likely will be um, tariff free for exporting and selling with a preferential treatment in that market that you just pointed out. So just, that's just one of the examples that we have in terms of the advantages that the Pacific Alliance enables to foreign investors. And, and, and I also uh, think something that in, in Europe it, we kind of take for granted, that uh, they can travel from one country to the other without having to show a, a document, and, and especially it's not necessary to, to, to bring your passport to cross a, a border. Um, that is also the case between Pacific Alliance states. Um, so you can, with, with your uh, national ID, you can travel to the other three member states. Uh, and I think there is uh, also more beneficial visa or, or fewer visa requirements, right, uh, David? Can you maybe tell us something about that? Yeah, so, yeah, it's basically what you just mentioned is brilliant because, uh, as we know, the, the EU, the European Union, uh, has been developing this wonderful model for over... 80 years maybe for the first uh, steel and um, and the carbon association in the 40s 50s so basically uh, all the europeans may think that this is a run of the mill thing in in all, all over the world but um it's not it's not actually that easy in in other countries in other regions so so you you touch on a great point uh, we're not there yet for for some things that that you would uh, like have here in Europe, for example, the the labor permits and whatsoever. 
but the commercial part i would i would say is the most advanced one in terms of also the customs and and, and all of this trade uh harmonization that's when we that like we're on the sweet spot of that then we'll address labor situations and and other and currency integration as well at, at some point that those are discussions that are going on right now in some countries but but we're you know we're, we're getting there and for foreign companies it's it's prime you know it's prime absolutely um maybe before we open the floor for uh, questions from the audience um may, maybe two very short questions to to you uh, david um what incentives um does Colombia offer to attract foreign business and investment to Colombia? And, and maybe connected to that, uh, yes. which sectors and industries are mostly being attracted uh, to Colombia and, and why? Yeah, so th thank you. That's, that's a great question. I will, I will touch on seven points, basically seven incentives uh, that uh, are, I would say, the, the paramount of of what we have to to offer as a country by and and i will also point out that our country is accustomed to compete not via incentives you have other countries that are very aggressive in terms of tax incentives but they are very small countries that do not have other things that colombia has such as stability macroeconomic stability equal treatment so you, you can get other countries in Latin America and Central America that, for example, will give you 20 year um, free tax terms, but you will, you will not find that type of, of competitiveness there. So I would like to start with that. But all, of course, all countries can complement their, their environment with some tax benefits. So the first one is maybe one that is not officially written, but is the equal treatment. All the incentives that I'm going to point out apply for either local or foreign companies. So that's something that you get uh, just by being there, you get equal treatment. You're not going to be punished in a tender, for example. Um, if if uh, if you're a foreign company, you will start uh, the same as a, as a national company. Then we have um, some uh, free trade zones. Our free trade zone regime is very uh, strong internationally. In Latin America, for instance, uh, one third of, of, of all free trade zones, permanent free trade zones are located in Colombia. So we're very experienced in, in this. And what are free trade zones? Basically, they are um, geographically delimited um, sectors or industrial parks that enable companies to carry out significant investments and the and the 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 government rewards you uh, with some benefits. What are they? A preferential income tax. Instead of paying thirty five percent, you will pay twenty percent if you comply with the exports requirements and some points that the government, of course, ask you. The, if they're going to reward you with fifteen points, fifteen percent less of in, of income tax, of course, they're going to ask you to be competitive in two exports, for instance you're not going to pay VAT or any tariff for the import of raw materials and machinery. And also you, um, you can make sales between the companies so in, in, in free trade zones without VAT at, at local level. So there's a lot on that topic. That's one of the most uh, strong incentives that we have. We have others, for example, if you are importing productive real assets, you will get 0% VAT. Also, uh, we have 0% tariff tax for raw materials and machinery that is it's not produced in Colombia. Uh, on another side, we have the logistic uh, distribution center. I would like to stop here because I feel like a lot of Swiss, co the, the, made in, the Swiss made brand is very strong, you know, so all the, the watches, uh, maybe the knives, everything is very strong. So the Swiss industry, I would say, is less um, open to bring their manufacturing out because that, that brand is very strong. And what can we offer is the logistics facility. So uh, you, you, as I mentioned earlier, El Dorado Airport is the, the number one air, air freight transportation 
a dog in the Americas. And that's even above Brazil, above Mexico. So Swiss and European companies can make the most out of that to, to, care, to establish distribution centers in Colombia, for example. And not only you will get the geographical advantage, you will also get this benefit that is the logistic distribution center benefit that all the income is not um, all, all the revenue that you get from that activity is not income uh, based that means that when you're uh, going to calculate your your income tax though that revenue is not going to count for your taxable base mm -hmm. so that's another one that would be very interesting for swiss and, and european companies in general we have also a, a special input system, which is the Plan Vallejo. That's for, for companies that are exporters, basically. And what they get is exemption in, in VAT and tariffs for raw materials and, and machinery that is used for the uh, manufacturing of, of goods that are going to be export, exported. And that's outside the free trade zone. So you get the same benefit, but outside the free trade zone. And lot but not uh, no, now for no I will, I will mention another one which is the labor we have a labor incentive which is the young talent incentive basically this uh, speaks about the 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 companies that hire young professionals what is it that that uh, haven't been employed formally employed what is a young a young uh, employee it's a person or uh, below 20 years of age that hasn't had a formal employment so if you employ that type of, of, of people you will get a hundred percent uh 120 percent deduction of the annual wage of that person so that means that you analyze the wage you multiply it by 1.2 and that amount you can deduct deduct it from your income tax uh, and last but not least i would i would say that uh the most strong incentive is is the renewable energy um, incentives and this is a commitment and this is a long-term strategy of this government and of colombia in general of course uh, our president comes with huge uh, um, projects and initiatives for the environment and how do we do this with this type of incentives i mentioned them earlier but this in a nutshell are like the seven uh tax incentives that we have and your second question were, was the the sectors you know the, the priority sectors right that we that we are promoting i don't know if you would like to stop there yes. if i should carry on no because because that's already uh, uh maybe uh, just switching over to to questions from the audience that's ex exactly uh, one of the questions uh yes. put to us like what, what industries are looking to invest in Colombia, maybe in terms of uh, FDI, which industries make up most of the FDI in Colombia? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we are a very diverse country. It depends if you are in Bogota, as I mentioned, financial services, 60% of financial services in Colombia are in Bogota as well. So if you're thinking about IT, you will, you will think about main capitals, but I can point out around six sectors, seven sectors that are the ones that receive the most FDI and that are also a priority for the government. What does that mean? That you will find specific policies to foster and to promote these sectors. And as I mentioned, this is a long-term strategy. I've had the pleasure of working uh, with foreign investment for over eight years and in that tenure, there has been uh, quite uh, three presidents and uh, many mayors and governors. So you see a long term strategy for these sectors. The first one is manufacturing, all life sciences that that is called uh, pharmaceutical products. We have very interesting conditions for for this uh, industry in Colombia. For example, in Bogota, you get uh, an excellent uh, climate and, and temperature during the whole year on average 14 year, uh, 14 degrees with low humidity that means that that's great for business because you don't have to invest in climate control for example uh in you and if you're in cali you will get other things in the pacific region you will get other benefits as well uh we have construction materials as i mentioned in colombia and you have been in colombia daniel many times uh, there are a lot of things to do. Colombia is under construction. And even if that's naggy for some people, 
uh, that business opportunities because we do not have the road, but you can go and build the road and your materials can, can, can be purchased. So construction materials are very strong. For example, there's a Swiss company, which is called Sika, that has um, a huge manufacturing plant in Colombia. We're also promoting um, all electrical components um, and equipment in general. Uh, fertilizers is another uh, key point that we are promoting because uh, many countries uh, didn't realize that they outsource their fertilizers production, fertilizers production, and they want to be as well self-sufficient in terms of fertilizers as well as in vaccines, for example. The third one is knowledge industries. This is more into the services landscape. This is IT namely software production, as you mentioned, and many companies do it. Uh, it. It is way more cost efficient to sell your product, your software in Europe and program it in, in Colombia, for example, at a way more cost efficient price with lower wages and excellent talent. Uh, and also lower taxes because taxes in Europe are, are higher than, than in, 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 in Colombia, for example. Um, uh, and that, that's one. So software, a uh, shared service center is another, another very strong sector. What is a shared service center is basically when an international company, instead of um, having, for example, a finance and accounting, uh, division in every single one of their branches. They build a huge office in, for uh, um, delivering services to all their branches. Uh, we have BPO, BPO industry, huge in Colombia currently. Uh, sustainable tourism, agri-foods, all the agricultural. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry for the for the noise. Uh, all the agriculture. Um, um, Industries are very strong and from Switzerland, over 30% of the projects that we have supported from this office since 2009 are related to agri-foods, um, of course. Uh, sustainability, all the, you know, smart uh, recycling and, you know, using waste for higher purposes is another one. And the last, and, and, the, and, and another one is infrastructure. You can have in, in Colombia there, a lot of infrastructure projects, as I mentioned, there's everything to do in, in Colombia. For instance, just in Bogota, we're building our first metro line. That means that way when just one, only one city has metro in Colombia. So that means that there are a lot of opportunities in all flavors, water, roadway infrastructure, railway infrastructure. And the last one, of course, energy transition. All that it has to do with solar power, wind power, eolic uh, um, um, industries and hydrogen, green hydrogen. I would like to end this this part of the sectors with with green hydrogen, which is one of the most important uh, bets that the, the the Colombia has in terms of energy transitions. We have we're one of the first countries to have a hydrogen roadmap. This is a document uh, that we'll be able to, we will be happy to share for for whom are interested. Uh, that points out all the road that has been um, that, that to follow, you know, and this was this was formulated by the last president, Mr. Ivan Duken, and Mr. Petro uh, is, you know, uh, also bol bolstering this sector as well. So that shows you the long term uh, strategy that even with different political flavors we can have in Colombia. Great. Thank you, David. Uh, I, I also think you, you mentioned um, a few documents like the, the salary survey and, and uh, the hydrogen roadmap um, that, that I would like to link uh, to, to the recording of this webinar later on. For those people who are interested, uh, we will provide the links uh, so, so that you can read up on those different topics. Um, and during today's webinar, which is almost coming to a close, uh, it, it was mentioned multiple times uh, that one of the comparative advantages of Colombia is uh, its human talent. Um, that the population is young, uh, uh, has a, a very good working attitude, 
um, is is uh, abundant, abundantly available. But one one of the questions uh, from the audience is is very valid, and and it's about the English level, uh, which I think across um, most countries in Latin America is still lacking, and that I think is 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 a big detriment to. Uh, having more people uh, being employed by by foreign companies um, because of the lack of English. So, so the question from the audience, and I would like to to, to pass it on to David, is what what is what is um, the, the government, what is Colombia doing to increase the, the the English level of its its young workforce? That's a great question, Dan, and thank you. I, I don't know who who uh, wrote that question, but but that's something that. Uh, we as a country and as regions address every day. I had the, the occasion when I had the pleasure of working many, almost all the strate strategic industries that I mentioned. And yeah. it's usual that companies come when, if you can find me 1000 engine, uh, software engineers that speak English, I will hire them tomorrow. If you can find me 5,000 BPO agents, I will hire uh, that speak B1 English. I will ha hire them tomorrow. And you as an investment promotion agency is like, I would, I would love to attract that talent, but uh, it's, it's the, 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 that amount of people is, is not unemployed. So what we are doing and not just as a country, because the, the national policies are important, but this is more um, focused on the regions, on the municipalities, and on the you know the cities as, as we we can do it. So what are they doing? They're basically articulating with international companies in order to meet their needs. And many agreements are being signed in order to make a safe bet, if you can call it, uh, for uh, placing that human talent. How does it work? The uh, district. Um, education secretariat that is like the ministry of education for every city has the ability to invest in their programs so what they're doing is that they are uh, um, they're celebrating agreements with international companies and they say i will educate this this people in one and a half years and i will i'll, I'll make the promise that i will hire them yeah, so it's a safe bet because that's like in agriculture if you have your crops and you sell the production before you even plant it you know it, that's what we are doing uh in the ef you know you you know education first we are in the middle you know in the middle in terms of a bilingual population but even though we have a rich amount of people that uh speak english you know regarding other countries of course due to numbers you know colombia is a 50 million uh, a million people country and just in bogota there are around 2 million people that speak english so in Medellin, for example i think it's 400,000 people uh, that that um that speak english so that's a lot of people as well so that's what we're doing we are including we are um, also going and i remember this project specifically we're going to schools also to um motivate children to and, and the, the investment promotion agencies are doing it uh with the foreign companies that look if you speak english you're going to be able to access to a, a wage that is 35 percent higher that it that if you just speak spanish and use and if you speak another language it would be another 25 percent higher so if you speak two languages, your wage will be around 60% higher than a person that just speaks Spanish. And I think that's the, the best argument possible uh, to, to, to show the potential people can gain by, by, by speaking a second language. So our hour is up. Um, there is there are more there is one more question from the audience but i, I think we, we can uh, we can maybe answer that in in the chat uh, after this webinar I, I would like to thank you both uh, very much francisco david thanks a lot for sharing your your opinions your insights i think um, there are a lot of good arguments that speak in favor of of colombia and and you guys are doing in in your 
different areas, but 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 you are doing a, a really good job in promoting uh, your country, and and I hope it's gonna attract the attention of a lot of European and and foreign companies in general. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank you much. Nice Thank you, Daniel, for the for your interest and the whole audience for the interest in Colombia. And, and we're ready to answer any questions, any any, and to receive any ideas, any 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 comments. Thank you so much for this webinar. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you.